Ted Bundy does not seem to match the profile of a typical serial murderer. Bundy came to prominence in Washington state politics after graduating from college with a bachelor's degree in psychology and enrolling in law school. He is good looking, clever and personable. It was a combination that won him the hearts of his female pals. His cleverness and charisma, however, pulled in his unsuspecting target and exposing him for the merciless monster he actually was. Bundy kidnapped, bludgeoned, and killed at least 20 women during a four-year period in 1970s, with many more likely dying at his hands. Bundy may not have looked the part, but by the conclusion of his reign of terror, his name had come to represent the worst of the misfits who appeared to strike at random and live the part of destroyed life. Eleanor Louise Cowell, 22, gave birth to Theodore Ted Robert Cowell in Burlington, Vermont, on November 24, 1946. Ted's father is unknown, but according to his mother, he was a sailor, but this was never proof. For the first few years of his existence, Ted was raised by his grandparents in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but was raised thinking that they were his parents and that his mother was his elder sister. Ted finally found out who his real parents were, but he didn't say how or when he found out. Ted's mother moved him to Tacoma, Washington in 1950 to start a new life. Eleanor met Jenny Bundy, a hospital chef there, and married him in 1951. Ted Bundy was formally adopted by Jenny Bundy, and his name was legally changed to what is known now. Eleanor and Jenny will go on to have four children of their own. In 1974, Bundy committed his first verified killings. Young women started vanishing in Bundy's neighborhood. Anne Burr, who disappeared from her Tacoma bed in 1961, is the first probable victim. Bundy was 14 years old and working as a newspaper delivery boy for Anne Burr's father at the time. Bundy denied this claim, but it hasn't been proven that he did or didn't do anything. Bundy started his academic career at the University of Puget Sound in 1965. Before transferring to the University of Washington in 1966, he developed a love affair with a classmate in 1967 and then dropped out in 1968. He moved east and enrolled for one semester at Temple University before dropping out. He returned to Washington in 1969 when he met Elizabeth Clover, with whom he had an on and off relationship. One of the most startling details of Bundy's background is that he started his career as counselor at Seattle Suicide Hotline in 1971. He met Anne Rule, who went on to write the Bundy biography, The Stranger Beside Me, while working there. Ted finally returned to college and enrolled at the University of Washington once again. He graduated in 1972 and attended law school at the University of Puget Sound. Bundy committed his first documented sexual assault in January 1974. He broke into Karen Sparks' apartment while she was asleep and battered her before sexually abusing her. Despite being in a coma for 10 days, she survived the assault but she has since been disabled. Ted's first assassination happened around a month later. In February, he stormed into the residence of Linda Ann Healy, another student of Washington University, battered her and then abducted her. Bundy abandoned many victims in the Taylor Mountain area, where her corpse was eventually located. Ted would go on to commit at least seven further killings around Washington and Colorado for the rest of the 1974 while still enrolled in school. At least seven murders for which he confessed, though there may have been more. That summer, while working at the Department of Emergency Service, Bundy met Carol Ann Boone and the two started dating. Meanwhile, she continued to date Elizabeth Clover, oblivious that the other woman existed. Ted relocated to Salt Lake City to attend the University of Utah and seek a law degree. After a month, the area's young ladies began to disappear. Melissa Smith, the doctor of a Utah police chief, was one of the first people identified as having probable bandy connection. He eventually confessed. However, that Nancy Wilcox was his first victim in Utah. Nancy was slain two weeks before Melissa. On November 8, 1974, Carol DeRange was departing from Omurray, Utah Mall when Bundy approached her, identified himself as Official Roseland, and gave her a false tale about someone trying to break into her vehicle. 
Carol agreed to follow Bundy to the police station to make a complaint, but she immediately understood that she was in for a surprise. Ted tried to handcuff her in the vehicle, but both shackles got caught on the same wrist. Carol was able to leave the truck and run. Carol would be one of the people responsible for placing Bundy behind bars, even if he was oblivious at the time. Bundy remained closely tied to one of the women he had left behind, Elizabeth Clover, while away at the college and on a cross-counter murder spree. Regardless of her inability to corroborate anything, she started putting together facts about Bundy and the atrocities he had committed. Clover reported Bundy to police several times in August, November, and December 1974. Following the appearance of the profile for the serial killer in the Midwest and her knowledge that young women were disappearing everywhere he went, Ted was detained in August 1975 while driving early in the morning through a Salt Lake City neighborhood. Despite the cop checking his vehicle and uncovering various suspicious items, including a ski mask and handcuff, they were unable to catch Bundy, and he was free. Even though Bundy was no longer in police custody, the officers continued to remain wary of him. They started reviewing the evidence at this time and were able to piece together that Bundy was most likely responsible for multiple missing young women throughout the Midwest. Bundy sold his automobile in September 1975, the same car he used to try to abduct the ranch, and the police took it from the new owner. They discovered hair from several women within that could be tracked back to them. Bundy was arrested in October and identified as Officer Roseland by the ranch. He was arrested and jailed, but eventually freed on bond. Buddy faced trial in February 1976 for kidnapping the ranch. He was found guilty. He earned a 1 to 15 year jail term at Utah State Prison. While in jail, he was accused of the murder of Karen Campbell, which he had committed in Colorado, and was subsequently moved to an Aspen, Colorado prison. Buddy was arrested in June and hauled to courtroom for a hearing. He was defending himself and sought to visit the library during a break to do research for this case. He hid behind a bookshelf, crawled out a window, jumped from the second floor of the building, and vanished. He injured his ankle in the fall, but that didn't stop him from making a sixth day into the woods, beyond the barriers placed by the court rope. He stole a vehicle and burgled a camping trailer in order to buy supplies. He was detained by two police officers when he was noticed. Later that year, over the Christmas break, he got entry to the chamber above by climbing through a hole in the ceiling. Bundy had somehow managed to get a detailed map of the jail. He changed into street clothes and went right out the jail front entrance. Until the next day, no one knew he was gone. After earning his release, Bundy hitchhiked and caught a bus to Denver. He then traveled to Chicago and boarded a train heading for an Ann Arbor. He stole a vehicle and traveled to Atlanta, where he bought a bus destined to Tallahassee. He tried to get a real job in Florida, but he failed, and he went back to his life of crime. Bundy found accommodation via the Chi Omega sorority at Florida State University. On January 15, 1978, less than a week after arriving in Florida, Bundy broke into the sorority house and murdered two young women while they slept, as well as assaulting two others. He also assaulted another woman after he left the sorority house. She survived. Bundy left Tallahassee. Terrified, the officials would close in on him, which they did. Bundy was detained on February 12th after his automobile was confirmed as stolen. Bundy was tried for the Chi Omega killing a second time in June 1979. He was convicted of murder on two counts, attempt murder on three counts, and burglary on two counts. For the murder convictions, he was condemned to death. Bundy was already a household figure at this time, and his trial in Florida was the first to be televised live. Indeed, a second trial was conducted in Florida for another murder committed by him in Lake City. Bundy was convicted twice for kidnapping and murdering Kimberly Leach on February 10, 1980. That, by electrocution, was decreed as his punishment. Guards at the Florida State Prison learned in 1984 that Bundy tried to escape by cutting through the bars on his window. He was transferred when they found mirrors in his cell. He never succeeded in escape, although he certainly tried. Recognizing that this was the end of his journey, he started admitting several atrocities to everyone who listened over the following few years. 
Bundy talked with Stephen Meekock and Hugh Ernest Wood for a lengthy amount of time, who conducted many of the interviews with Bundy for the new Netflix documentary. Additionally, Bundy met with FBI Behavioral Analysis Unit Specialist Agent William Hagemeyer. Bundy said he was responsible for most of the homicides that investigators looked into, as well as those that they didn't know about. Ted Bundy died in the electric chair at the Florida State Prison in Rayford, Florida at the age of 42 on January 24, 1989 at 7.16 a.m.